This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Today's focus is data that arrives to us from the Fremont Police Force on the Model S that they've owned for the past year. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. Your assistance is greatly appreciated. It makes all the difference in the validability of this channel. If you want some daily trading insights as well as investing insights on Tesla and other stocks, please take time to join us on Patreon. Information is below. Um, also want to encourage you, if you enjoy the show, please like. So what happened last week was we visited, visited the factory of Tesla. What we learned was that obviously there's a lot happening there and we've provided uh, video and shows in line with that experience. So today's concentration is something that we've been eager to find for quite a while, which is, you know, how is, where is their data to help uh, consumers who are owners, et cetera, figure out uh, how to improve their ownership experience with Tesla. As you know, Consumer Reports actually does uh, gather data and sort of roll through it on behalf of all car owners, and I believe there's information there also for Tesla, but I've been really eager to sort of uh, poll folks, for example, all of you here, um, you know, it'd be great if we started collecting data as the cars age over time to determine where we are with the vehicle. So there are five key data points that were provided by the Fremont Police that I thought were interesting and useful. The first one is they looked at fuel consumption. So their vehicles are going between 40 and 70 miles a day. They have 250 miles of range on an S85 from 2014. So they collected as much data as possible for the ownership year of 2019. Uh, and so um, one item, the first item is they mentioned the Tesla advantage where they came to gasoline. Uh, the first part of this is the fact that um, at $3 a gallon, the net cost of fuel for the year for their Crown Vic was actually $5,000 approximately. And for the Tesla in the same period is approximately $1,000 electricity that was used. So obviously huge advantage here, no big surprise. Uh, the one surprise that probably lurks is the fact that uh, the average price that they assume was three dollars a gallon right now that number in california is 350 approximately so the the value proposition of tesla relative to the cost of fuel is obviously a leading item uh, in this circumstance the second uh, uh, data point that they reviewed was cost of repairs they indicated that uh, tesla or the the crown vic experienced about twenty nine hundred dollars in repairs over that year, and the Tesla actually experienced higher repair costs, closing on $5,000. And so, uh, it, given the, the difference in fuel, et cetera, this starts to suggest that eh, maybe Tesla may, may not be at the huge advantage position. Another data point that they reviewed was the fact that despite having net higher costs of repairs, Tesla was off the road for 27 days during that year, and the Crown Vic was off the road for 66 days for that year. So what this kind of hints at is that the after warranty cost of the vehicle for parts is actually higher for Tesla than it is for the Crown Vic, which actually kind of makes sense. One of the challenges is that once you go over 100,000 units sold, and that vehicle continues to be sold by a manufacturer, there are a lot of secondary markets that you can get parts from uh, as opposed to having to go to the manufacturer where you're paying full retail. So, uh, uh, you know, I would think now for Model S parts, given how long the cars have been out there and the number of them on the road, we're starting to see secondary manufacturing occur that might help in uh, the how those parts are going. The next thing that we wanted to, uh, so, our expectation is, yes, there's a parts cost advantage for the domestic like the Crown Vic, but we expect for that number to start to sort of come in line so Tesla ends up being competitive on that statistic. So 
The other variable that I was intrigued by that was presented um, was that the, uh, the folks at the Fremont Police Department talked about anxiety. What they indicated was that um, it's a lot quieter in the car. So for example, if they have to be on the radio with colleagues, it's a lot easier to hear them without having an engine that's uh, growling that uh, might affect the quality uh, of communications. And then the other point that I was surprised by as a data point was they pointed out that the officers who, who drove these vehicles experienced less anxiety, uh, et cetera, based on the quiet environment of the car. So I think, so they pointed out maybe there's a 2K cost advantage that, uh, that goes Tesla's way. But when you add up the lack of pollution with um, the creature comfort elements of this vehicle, uh, they concluded it was totally worth it. My view of things is I actually thought that uh, police departments wouldn't be able to use it because I keep thinking of the number of miles that the folks on the highway patrol put on a car. But uh, this does highlight the fact that in a small city, you actually have fewer miles being run on those vehicles and it's a lot more viable for these cities to swap to electric and have it be effective. So I thought this was pretty interesting stuff because it gives other police departments some sense of what the numbers would look like uh, if they were to, to replace their current vehicles with Tesla. Based on this experience, the Fremont Police Department decided to go ahead and um, actually expand so they purchased first a, um, a, uh, a pickup from Ford that's hybrid, and they also picked up a Model Y. The indication was that the Model Y had better ground clearance and was a better fit uh, for what they had to do than uh, the Model S. And so hopefully we'll be getting some data on how that performs as well. I'm also intrigued because we're in a zone right now where um, you know, if you're going to own, what should you expect over many miles? And having data points like this, you know, really helps that process. And a little surprised that, you know, Tesla doesn't hand out information. They tend to sort of fix the items that have popped up to be issues. And then that's blended into the new cars. And I believe this is one of the reasons that parts are so expensive is that if you keep improving the car on a quarterly basis, you kind of end up in a situation where you might have cars that are on the road that are not that old from each other in years, but may be significantly different in terms of enhancements that are being done in-house at Tesla uh, that are baked into the car. And now over a year or two, you end up with the inability to uh, quickly get parts out and maybe cost efficiently. So, you know, we haven't heard a lot about part shortages recently. So it's clear that Tesla emphasized this and started sort of winning this game. And to hear that Tesla was able to cut the number of days the vehicles were off the road in this fashion is a confirmation of the changes made to address the shortage of parts. So I, uh, overall, I think this is terrific news. The fact that the car works well in police situations, those cars put out a lot of pollution on a daily, a monthly, annual basis uh, as they do their patrols. And I think this suggests then that there's a place for electric vehicles when it comes to uh, police situations. So I, I, again, am looking forward to collecting data that we can share with all of our viewers that's helpful in, in the ownership experience. This is obviously not a, an aha moment in terms of something crazy happening, but I particularly enjoy the fact that as fuel prices rise, the cost effectiveness of electric goes higher for these departments and it's nice to see a domestically produced vehicle replacing stuff like the crown vic uh, in this process so I, this show wasn't designed to go this way but i would love to get feedback from you regarding you know any challenges you've had with your ownership experience of your tesla be it parts or other things uh, i've been tracking things like what uh, people choices people are making I'm seeing a lot of Michelins on cars right now. It's standard equipment now, but it, uh, Tesla has swapped out 
using Goodyear in many cases. So it could be tires, it could be uh, other common repairs. The most, the, as you probably all know, the, the largest uh, annual repair item for most uh, cars had been the door handles on the Model S and in terms of uh, warranty repairs. And so it seems like that's smoothed out because I haven't been hearing a lot of issues about it. It's still sort of structured so that if you're in a very cold, cold climate, it's been known to freeze and therefore make it difficult for people to get in and out of their cars. So, you know, we'll see if they decide to finally make a change here, maybe regular handles uh, to sort of eliminate this issue. It hasn't happened yet, but it's one of Elon's pet projects that he obviously has chosen not to give up. At any rate, um, been really looking forward to finding some hard data we could work off of. Uh, we did get a little bit here from the Fremont police. It's kind of cool to have the police in the same city the cars produced uh, have access and be able to, um, you know, be a part of the experiment and the dream of Tesla becoming a large and successful company. This uh, wanted to move over to our health tips. Don't forget your 25 leg lifts a day on both legs. Strengthens the quad muscles, reduces chance of knee issues. Number two, um, encourage you to 5-2 or another of the diets uh, that are uh, fasting diets designed for overall general health and mental health. Also wanted to encourage you to, to not eat within two hours of going to bed, prefer um, preferably four hours to allow the food to di fully digest so you don't have acid reflux and other issues. And finally, uh, a 30 or better SPF is a good idea uh, as a way to prevent skin cancer issues from popping up. At any rate, uh, this is great for a Tesla fan insight. Chis German of Waf Franz Lihitro Hebrew Choda Hafez Farsi Stras, which a Russian Nihama, Chinese Heido, Swedish Kombanwa, Japanese Namaste Hindi, and uh, Heido uh, in Sweden, and uh, our friends in Australia, good day. Thanks for joining us. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. We look forward to your data share because I think. It'll help a lot of folks figure out, you know, better ownership process. And I think it'll be interesting on this share because, you know, Elon did point out that their ramping vehicles tended to have more defects than ones that were at a stable point once production had gotten going. So I'm kind of looking forward to what you guys have to say about this. Have a great day. Bye for now. And once again, thanks for joining us.